Hello, YouTube. It is your girl here, Tammy C. Walker, owner of Dreams Are Reality. I created this channel to provide light and love. And I have been doing something a little bit different, the NACA videos. This is for home buyers that are wanting to buy a home. This program, it helps you. You don't have to put money down for the down payment, but you do have to put money down for like your homeowner's insurance and the inspection and other stuff. I just want to say that just in case people are like thinking they could come to the table with zero dollars. You do have to have something, but don't let that discourage you. It's still a really good program. If you um, get involved with this program, your mortgage will be financed through Bank of America at a very affordable interest rate. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about my process and where I'm at. I did the workshop and I did my first intake. Now I'm coming up on my second intake or, you know, follow-up session with my counselor later this month. This video is about removing the Experian Boost and also just following up with your action plan. So I am going to jump over to Canva and Oh, I got to share my screen. Here I go, you all. Hold on. You all bear with me. Oh, my. Share screen. And where is Canva? Uh -huh. Okay. First. Please like, subscribe to my channel. Also hit that bell icon so you can hear more about the NACA videos. NACA, Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America. Go to www.naca.com and sign up for the workshop. That's your first step. It is going to be a Zoom workshop. Could be in person depending on where you are. I am in Illinois, outside of Chicago. I did my own Zoom at the end of February. It was 300 and something participants on that workshop. Stay until the end. At the end of that workshop, you will get a code to set up your web file. And this is where it all starts. You um, put in all the information they're asking for. It's quite a bit of information. And go in and put in at the end, once you put in everything, click book an appointment. Also, if, uh, let me see if I had that phone number, oh Lord. If you don't do the appointment that way, bear with me, I'm trying to see if I had a phone number you would call. Oh gosh, I don't think I say the text message you are. I was gonna try to give you all the phone number you can call. Hmm. Okay, I got to move on because I'm messing up the video here. If you go to NACA.com, you will see the number to call to make an appointment for your first intake, or you can do it through the web file. That's how I did mine. I hope that made sense. <laughs> okay, so today we want to talk about removing Experian Boost and keeping up with your action plan. These both are very important. I had Experian Boost trying to boost my credit score. My credit is okay. It's not, I don't have bad credit. I just wanted to make it higher. Um, and I was like, why not? I'm paying these utility bills. Well, once I got on my, you know, um, counseling call, really my Zoom intake, she was like, uh, wait a minute, you have like, I had like six things coming up because I think I had Hulu, Com Ed, which is Illinois Electricity, I had Nightcore, which is my gas. I had AT&T, which is, I have AT&T internet and um, the direct TV. So both of those were coming up. And I think I had Netflix. Anyway, it totaled like 400 bucks. And she was like, oh my God, we have got to get that off. That's taken away from your money that you could have towards your mortgage. So, so why you want to remove the Experian Boost? Because of what I just said, it's taken away from your money available for your mortgage. So let's just say you want to do a, here I go with math and Lord knows I'm not good with math. 
if you want your mortgage to be seventeen hundred, and and this is an example, I had four hundred dollars worth, so I just made these numbers up. Let's just pretend you had, you know, like the four hundred dollars worth, and you want your mortgage to be seventeen hundred. Well, you just you're tapping into your availability for that mortgage now. It's looking like you can only afford thirteen hundred because four hundred is going on those experience items. So, like on here, two hundred sixty-one dollars and ninety-nine cent is going to. Uh, it's looking like you have debt, and once you remove that from your Experian report, I'm not doing a good job explaining it. What you're going to do is go into your Experian Boost and click on Remove and get that off of your Experian report. It's reporting as debt, and you want less debt so you can have more for your mortgage. So, like here, I just use an example: Nicor Gas, fifty-five dollars, AT&T. $70, come, come Ed is short for Commonwealth Edison, Electric Company, $60, Hulu, $6.99 a month, Cricket cell phone, $70, totaling $261.99. That's not looking good. That's looking like you, got, you have more debt than you really have. You want to remove it because the bills from Boost are showing up as debt. I'm kind of saying the same thing twice. This is taking away from your monthly mortgage, really availability amount. I had $400 of Experian Boost items per month and I removed them all. You could do it within five minutes. I had them all removed and they're going to keep emailing you emails. Take those emails, make them PDFs. And then you want to um, log into your web file, upload it under, under other and as a letter of explanation. Again, get the Experian Boost items removed. Save them as a PDF. Upload it under other, under your NACA web file, and then save it as a letter of explanation. Talk to your counselor. They're probably going to tell you the same thing mine told me. She had me to remove them, and I went and did it on site. Soon as she told me, I was doing it as we were talking. So, um, I'm saying the same thing again, but it's okay. Now, if you are showing $900 of debt, you could take that $261.99 off. And now you only show $638 of debt. Maybe your car note $300 is more monthly credit card bills. You can afford to pay an additional $261.99 towards your mortgage instead of it showing up as a debt. So it, I was just saying here, discuss removing the experience boost from your credit with your counselor. Oh God, counselor. I don't know why I put it twice, but mine advised me to remove it. My counselor advised me to remove it. So next we want to work on your action plan in between your session, which I have some work to do. I did good. I did, I'm gonna tell you all what all I did. I had a, kind of a lot of stuff I thought, but some of it was simple. Like I had additional addresses. I had additional names on a credit report. And let me just read it as I, yeah. Okay. So I had address corrections. I did that. It was showing up an extra PO box that don't belong to me. So I got that removed. I ended up um, doing an online inquiry and telling them that wasn't my PO box. I had additional names on the credit report because I've been divorced since 1999. So I uploaded my birth certificate, a copy, and I uploaded my divorce papers. You have to keep putting the bank statements on and I need to add some more because once when we were on together at the end of March, it did not, um, I didn't have my bank statement. My last bank statement hadn't came through yet. So therefore um, it wasn't available yet. So now I can add it because it's come through. Keep adding your bank statements every month. Keep it updated. I did not do that budget yet because I don't want to, but I have to. So I'll be doing that budget um, definitely probably this weekend since I'm on spring break. I have a little more time than normal. Keep adding your credit card statements. If you have 10 credit cards, you should have 30 statements, three per credit card, three months worth. Credit lines paid in full. I had three credit cards. Um, that I'm going to pay off. One is definitely on zero. The other one is my target. I have, it's a small uh, balance. So I need to get that paid off. Then I have a third one that I have to get paid off. And that's by June 30th. So I think next time I talk to her, 
April 29th. I should have two out of three paid off. That's my goal, which is good, I hope. <laughs> I have my divorce papers already uploaded. Employment history, that's all there. I had an inquiry for credit. I got a new um, treadmill and I financed it. So I had to explain that that's what I bought. I put all my landlord information and I've been, I was living at the same place for six years. And then I'm at a newer place now, it's almost a year. So those are the only two I put there. Um, late payments. Doo -doo -doo. I did have a late payment for a few years ago. So I had to explain that. And you do that with the letter of explanation. And your counselor will give you a template that has it has you put down your account number. Of course, what well, is blacking out, but the last four of your account number, the title is going to say that, like late payment. That's what it'll say. And then they have you put your NACA ID and your name. So you'll be doing that. Uh, let's see what else. Of course, that minimum required funds. So that's um, the money that you need to put to have. And I don't have my, wait, hold on, you all. I could tell you what that consists of. It is going to be like your earnest money. You must have some of that, at least $1,000 here in Illinois to hold that house. You're going to need the home inspection. You are going to need homeowners premium for the first year. Um, the escrow account holds the homeowners insurance that's two months worth. The real estate taxes, that could be two to 12 months. So they have here $500, not to alarm you. Prepaid mortgage interest, that's like 300 some dollars. And then you want to have a month in the um, PITI. And here I go with these acronyms. You all, I'm sorry, don't quote me on the PITI, but it's got to be in reserves, but it may have here $1,300 for that. So you have to have some money. Don't think you don't need money, but that's what the MRF, the minimum required funds is. You want to have your employment history there. You want to have your pay stubs the last 30 days. I do believe. Yep, last 30 days. So I need to upload another pay stub. And the payment shot, if you want a mortgage, say you are paying now $1,500 in rent, but you want your mortgage to be $1,700. I misspelled mortgage. <laughs> um, you must save an extra $200 a month. That's showing like I can afford this additional mortgage money, you know, this additional $200. Um, hmm. I also have rental verification on mine, which I already put that on. Um, student loans. I had two student loans. I had to make sure it showed that I was in an income driven plan and I had put my um, regular statements up there and that wasn't good enough. So I had to go back in and really find the one that says, Tammy, you know, C. Walker is on an income driven plan. That's very important. So if you have student loans, Make sure it's showing income driven plan, how much you pay per month, and like the dates and stuff. So that was really important. If you have late payments and write offs, please um, explain that. They're going to give you a letter template to um, follow that as well. I'm still with you all. I just feel like I owe you all a better explanation. Hold on, bear with me for a moment. Okay, so PITI, I don't like doing that, just saying acronyms. That's the principal interest, taxes, and insurance. And I had I did explain that as I was reading that off, but it came up again. I felt like I was not explaining that well. You will need extra money for the PITI, principal interest, taxes, and insurance. Okay. So I just want to do a video to follow up and give out some additional information. Just, I did this channel originally, and this is what my channel is about, Light and Love. I talk about relationships a lot because I'm a therapist and that's what people come to me about the most, as, as well as depression and anxiety. But since I'm on this home buying journey, journey, I figured what better way than use my channel and help others. 
I, you know, I, I just hate for people to feel like they can't afford things or I'll never have a home or I'll never get married. Or I'll never have a baby. Those things, it just makes me so sad because all of them are reachable and attainable. So um, stay on your NACA journey. Check out other NACA videos. I've been following some great um, people and they have some good information out here. So go check out their videos as well. What I'm saying is good, but they may have something additional. They are, or their way is going to be different. And just listen to the different people. It's going to help you be more prepared for your appointment. Read through your purchasing information under NACA.com. But please, please, please follow your action plan because I felt like my counselor, she really was working hard. We were on there for three hours and I wouldn't dare want to show back up at the end of April and not do what she told me to do because she really worked with me. Keep working on your file. You stay positive. You got to stay positive regardless. Um, and thank you for watching. Hit the like button. And subscribe for updates. Hit the bell so you can see my next video. I'll be doing another video at the end of April. Definitely talking about what happened during my second session. Okay? Leave me comments. People have been so, yeah, just too, too, too much. Leaving these comments, asking questions, and I love every minute of it. My goal is to always answer all my viewers. So even if it takes a couple of days, which it should, it should not. I will get you an answer. If I don't have an answer, it's because I'm probably researching it and trying to figure it out. But I'm usually pretty good about answering my viewers. I treat that like I treat my emails. I try to always answer emails. Okay, have a beautiful day. Keep on your NACA journey. Do not get discouraged. And I'll be back with another video. Bye-bye.